One year ago, he learned the truth. You're a wizard, Harry. And his first year at Hogwarts school became legend. And so, for Harry Potter and his friends, another year begins. It's very different from the first film. It's got basically more of everything. Hold still! There's kind of more room for action. Much more adventurous, yeah. The chamber is said to be the home of a monster. I can't wait to see the spiders. Harry! What? <sighs> it continues to be a faithful adaption of the second book. Who are you? Dobby the house elf. I think it's funnier than the first film. There's new characters in this. Nice big smile, Harry. Together you and I rate the front page. Everywhere that Gilderoy uh, intercedes or intervenes and causes some version of mayhem. No! Draco's back and he's a lot worse in the second film than he is in the first. It's just great fun. But if there really is a Chamber of Secrets and it's really been opened, then that means that the Air Slytherin has been returned to Hogwarts. The first film opened on Friday, and then on Monday, we were immediately into shooting uh, Chamber of Secrets. You know, you just back to work, back with the people you know. Hey, welcome back. It was really good to see everybody again. It was really good to actually sit in front of the camera and film with them. The challenge of the first film was to basically explain to the audience what's going on in this kid's life. Having done that, you can get into the second film and immediately get into the story. That's what's exciting about doing the second film. He's discovered his home at Hogwarts. Hogwarts is where he belongs. And when he, he comes back, he discovers that there's a real threat to his school. The Chamber of Secrets has indeed been opened. Trouble. Unless the culprit is caught, it is likely the school will be closed. Hogwarts was founded by uh, four professors. One of them was Salazar Slytherin. So Slytherin built a secret chamber in the school called the Chamber of Secrets, where he could go and work on his dark magic. The only way the chamber could be opened was by the true heir of Slytherin. And in the film, we try to find out who the heir of Slytherin is. Our goal with the films is to have them be true representations of the books, in spirit, and in story and character. You heard what Hagrid said. Follow the spiders. They're heading into the dark forest. <sighs> Why spiders? Why couldn't it be follow the butterflies? It was also exciting to make a darker picture, slightly more of an action-adventure film this time around, which is really exciting to me. It appeals to the to the ten-year-old boy inside of me. Don't panic. Unlike a pure remake or a pure sequel, it's a story that exists uh, on its own terms. Don't be panic now. Harry's character is very different from in the first film. Harry's a lot stronger character. In the first film, Harry's very reactive to everything around him, and in the second film, he's very proactive. Rick the Sempra! Harry! Hagrid! Hello, Hermione! Hermione definitely becomes more sort of easygoing. She's kind of a little less obsessed with books and work, and she kind of settles down a bit. Why are we bringing this potion in broad daylight in the middle of the girls' lavatory. Don't you think we'll get caught? Ron's kind of changed because his sister's now there, and he's kind of got to be the big brother, kind of looking after the sister. And then this film, we've got the owl. I've got the owl, Errol, who's really, really stupid and clumsy. <laughs> What we really wanted to explore in the second one was the fact that the kids are getting older. It's the second year at, uh, at Hogwarts for these three children. So things are start, starting to get a little more complex. Uh, relationships aren't as simple as they once were. Hiya, Harry. Rupert is incredibly funny, and we had a great time because we've spent about a month in the flying car together. What happens is they can't get through the uh, platform, so they have to take the flying car because they can't catch the train to get to Hogwarts. You're getting close. Hold on. Which, in the end, turns out to be an incredibly bad idea as they end up flying straight into an incredibly violent tree. 
yeah, that was really fun. Those were some of the best filming days, I think. I'm so determined to embarrass me. <laughs> I'm determined to embarrass you. I'm determined oh, yeah. to be taller than you are. Me, Rupa and Emma and some of the other kids have developed really strong bonds now. We all get on very, very well. But we're not really enemies. We love each other, really. Me and Tom get on really well in real life. In the film, they really hate each other. Famous Harry Potter. Can't even go to a bookshop without making the front page. Draco Malfoy is a bit cleverer. I reckon he's got a bit cleverer over the years because he seems to think of more evil schemes. Scared Potter. You wish. I'd cheat a little bit at the beginning. If I say stash it! Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gilroy Lock. <gasps> Mum fancies him. Gilderoy Lockhart is a very vain, egotistical author. He pretends to be humble, and he pretends to be brave and strong, and he pretends to be a gracious person, but in reality, he's not any of those things. He's a complete and utter phony. If we are to believe everything he says, he has taken on more wizards and foul creatures and monsters than any other wizard in living memory. Gilderoy Lockhart. Order of Merlin, third class. Honorary member of the Dark Force Defense League and five times winner of which weekly's most charming smile award? Hermione is seriously dreamy about Lockhart. He is singularly the most gorgeous Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher this year at Hogwarts. <laughs> I didn't get rid of the band and banshee by smiling at him. <laughs> Boys hate him. They're just embarrassed by him. He's cringeworthy. He's just, ugh. Come, be warned. It is my job to arm you against the foulest creatures known to wizard kind. What tips Harry and Ron uh, off is uh, he can't quite deliver on his ability to control a group of Cornish pixies, which he's brought into the classroom. Pesky pixie pestanobi! <laughs> That, as you might say, is not a success. Mr. Supporter. Lucius Malfoy. We meet at last. Lucius Malfoy. He is a slime ball, basically. Your scar is legend. As, of course, is the wizard who gave it to you. Voldemort killed my parents. He must be very brave to mention his name. Well, Lucius is a very dull character. I mean, he's a thoroughly, thoroughly unpleasant man. He's completely supreme in his arrogance and ruthlessness. There's nothing that he wouldn't do. I took my way, Potter. So the camera loves him. And unfortunately, the camera loves him in a really evil way. He's, he personifies evil to me on screen. And you must be Miss Granger. Yes, Drake has told me all about you. The fun in this for me is being as grotesque as I can and yet trying to make it real. It's tricky with Lucius. <laughs> There's not a lot going for him in the popularity stakes. Remember, and it's like say slow, telling a tale, big and sinister, solid, set and action. It's been 50 years since the chamber was last opened. You wouldn't tell me who opened it. Only that they were expelled. The one thing that the success of the first film enabled us to do was to sit back and be a little more relaxed about what we were doing and have a lot more fun with it. <laughs> That's actually great. So you'll find a lot more humor in this film. It was more of a playful side, certainly for me and the, the kids. Say something! <laughs> Malfoy had just been really horrible to Hermione, and Ron tried to stick up for her and did a spell, but it hit him, and he began to choke out slugs. <laughs> but they tasted quite nice, actually. They're taken to Hagrid. <laughs> it's an amazing world for somebody to play in. For a 12-year-old, you know, it's, it's, it's ours. I am so lucky. How many kids in the world would pay thousands 
to be doing this right now. I wouldn't have swapped this for anything. It was such a great atmosphere, the first film, and uh, we wanted to maintain that experience. So you do form specific bonds, and you form a strong sense of almost family with the crew, and I wanted to continue that on the second film. There was a sense of coming into a, a family, being the newcomer, but being very welcome, so that was a nice atmosphere. It's friendly, and people laugh. The kind of humor that's in the books is on the set. And I think everyone's a bit more kind of relaxed, really, you know? just because we know what to do and what to expect. The kids really felt comfortable with all departments, and I thought, well, I'd like to keep it comfortable. Again, it's all about making those kids, that the core of kids, feel comfortable on the set. Then the first one, I'd never done any professional acting, so I was nervous. But now I know the people I'm working with, and I know my surroundings, so I feel a lot more relaxed, and I feel as though I can really have a good time with this one. When you look at him, I just want you to give him a cold, hard look when he keeps doing this. Like, don't roll your eyes. It's like... Chris Columbus is wonderful. He's magic with those children. He's so patient. He's so understanding. They love him. He loves kids. That's excellent, guys. Really good focus. There are loads of twists and turns everywhere. Harry? Ron. Excellent. The snakes and the spiders. Not any spells. Quidditch. I suspect the audience will be quite looking forward to me getting my comeuppance. The characters develop and the friendships develop. So it really is a chamber of secrets? Yes. The effects are stunning this time around. How dare you steal that car? It's a lot scarier. It's funnier. It's got more action. Harry! Hold on! It's going to be amazing. Chamber secrets. Let us hope that Mr. Potter will always be around to save the day. Don't worry. I will be. So sorry, dozed off. What have I missed?